So one of the sort of silly things I do is I read the news on this thing called Y Combinator and um, or Hacker News, and it's sort of vaguely tech related, but there's this stream of just sort of oddities that people put on there because they think that something is kind of interesting. And somebody put a YouTube video on in which um, this woman who's a YouTuber and a knitter and I guess some sort of academic um, decided to 3D print this thing that is a, a scanned, a laser scanned copy of what's known as a Roman dodecahedron. And um, she used it to sort of prove her theory or, or validate her theory of what a Roman dodecahedron was used for. Turned out, as I came into Lincoln Museum, as I'm just wandering around and I came into Lincoln Museum, what do they have on display but a Roman dodecahedron? And they've got the uh, little blurb beside it that says the thing that I'd heard when I found out about these things um, as this odd piece of curiosity. It's been found by archaeologists and nobody knows what it's for. And it's found in sort of different places around the Roman Empire, but in only kind of particular locations within the Roman Empire. And they're made of cast metal, basically bronze. Um, I think it's tin and copper or something like that. So yeah, bronze. Um, and, uh, or brass. One of the two. Anyway, it's a cast metal. They're precision casts, so they must have been an expensive item. So the archaeologists are like, oh, it's a grave good. It's a religious article. It was used in some sort of ritual. And they're like, the Romans had these things for multiple sides, so maybe that was it. It was a religious thing. But why are the holes different sizes? Um, well, that's got to have this religious significance. Or maybe it's because of this god and something related to the underworld and all these sort of theories. And then there's other people who are like, no, it's a sex toy. And there's, you know, um, or maybe it's a weapon. There was even things about, was it a, a um, undiscovered Roman grenade? And, and all sorts of weird theories coming out. But then this group of people who are knitters are like, no, I'm pretty sure it's used for making these tubes. <laughs> um, and so this video came out that shows a, uh, a couple of different ways of using this device with a simple piece of wood that is slightly tapered to put it into this thing so that the larger hole is on the bottom of the taper, like on the wider part of the taper and the narrow holes on the top and it rams down onto the taper and then you essentially just weave around the bottom set of knobs um, and that allows you to make a tube of interwoven wool or silver or gold that can then be extruded out to make um, like uh, uh, jewelry or, or uh, different kinds of, of essentially a, a sort of very fancy rope. I watched the video and I'm like, I'm convinced that's it. That's that that's a solution. It's a, a ubiquitous, absolutely boring, probably fairly inexpensive tool for making wool uh, objects, which just haven't survived and the wood hasn't survived. So the thing that survived is the ubiquitous piece of machinery that, you know, some person in the past would be like, oh, why is this a museum? Right? I think that's hilarious. It's like, you know, 2,000 years from now, like traffic cones in the museum being like, this was a religious thing and they, they worshipped the great conical god of red, you know, and yeah. Anyway, when I popped into the museum, I found it quite funny to see this thing on display in a, like, on a plinth with a piece of, um, you know, plexiglass around it with a sign beside it describing it, and it's in the marketing material and everything because it's on a temporary display because it's so important. So I had to go up to the guy who was running the thing and talk to him about it, and it turned out he was fascinated by the thing too. So anyway, I'm gonna go get a shot of it now. There we have it. The world famous Norton Disney dodecahedron. All right, got this lovely sign explaining that it was featured on BBC Two's Digging for Britain. The news of the discovery has spread around the world. It's being studied by a PhD student at Newcastle University. And there it is, featured on the marketing material. It's a fascinating knitting tool. It makes you think those Romans were pretty good at lost wax casting. Hmm? Is it nice enough to let you try on a Roman shield and helmet? That's good fun. Although it turns out that this Roman had a smaller head than me. By a long shot. It's actually quite painful. And then here we have a uh, 2,500 year old narrow boat on the river with them. And they also let you put on if it fits the helmet of Sir Geoffrey Luttrell, who also had a smaller head than me, or else his nose would be broken the moment somebody pushed on this thing.
I mean, I think it's relatively fashionable, but I also wouldn't want to have the uh, the big thing up there if I ever fell off a horse. 